Lord, we, we thank you for this moment. It's a blessed moment, God. We're blessed to be here. We're blessed to be in our right mind. We're blessed to be seated at your table to receive nourishment that will do for the soul that which nothing else can do. We know that we don't live by bread alone, by food alone, but we live and we thrive by the words that come out of your mouth. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight to the intent, Lord God, that these words would take root in the hearts and the minds of those who are under, under the sound of it and bear great fruit. I thank you, Lord, for the spirit of wisdom and revelation and insight and knowledge and prophecy and full access to heaven's resources. Give me everything I need to be a blessing to your children that you love so much. I pray, God, that your love would be felt through the words that come forth, the love that's so powerful that it drives out fear, that it cures literally ailments and illness and and anxiety hallelujah i pray that some of that literally would be swallowed not some of it all of it would literally be swallowed in the power of your presence and that there would be a revival of mind heart and spirit a revival literally of our divine self our god self who we are in christ may there be a revival of that and that revival would give us new eyes new vision new perspective new power new elevation a restoration of dreams, hopes, vision, and clarity, and callings. I pray that we will leave here on fire. Not a temporary fire that any old wind can blow out, but a fire that will burn and never be put out until we see your face. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Do me a favor, greet somebody before you take your seat. I love this church, man. Love this church. I love y'all. I'm going to read. God gave me a, a word for you. A right now word. A word that's going to change everything, I believe. It's going to confirm some things. It's going to edify you. It's going to build you up. It's going to change your eyes. <laughs> it's almost like a time of jubilee but we'll get to that ecclesiastes 3 verses 1 through 8 it says love this passage to everything there is a season a time for every purpose under heaven a time to be born and a time to die a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted a time to kill and a time to heal a time to break down and a time to build up a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. That's powerful. This passage of scripture, that entire book of Ecclesiastes was written by a guy by the name of King Solomon. And if you study King Solomon's history, one of the most notable things about him was his prayer. God appeared to him in a dream and said, ask whatever you want from me and I would give it to you. What a question. If God asks you that, let me see, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> give me a boo, a good one, a good boo, uh, a, a Bentley, and a Beverly Hills house. Not you, some people you know. But for real, like if God asked you, like, you know, genie in a bottle type of scenario, if God said, ask of me and I'll give you anything. I bet that there would be some interesting requests. You don't have to tell it. You don't, you know, I don't, you don't have to put your business out there. He could have asked for anything, but he's noted for asking when he could have asked for anything. He says, God, give me, you can find this in 1 Kings chapter 3, I believe. Read your whole Bible, you'll find it. He says, God, give me a wise and understanding heart 
so that I can lead these so great your people. In other words, he recognized that he had a calling and he had a responsibility to his calling and he knew that the greatest thing that God could give him was not things, but wisdom. Mm. And so God says, oh, I like the way you think, boy. Love your heart posture. God loves a pure heart. He says, so since you asked right, since you didn't ask for riches or the heads of your enemies, with some of you was like, yeah, kill him, Jesus. Just one. I, I just waste one on killing him, Jesus. I still got two. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I think. I think. <laughs> he said, because you didn't ask for riches nor the head of your enemies, he says, your request is granted. I'm going to make you the wisest person ever. There will be no one wiser than you from before you or after you. And not only that, since you didn't ask for riches, I'm going to make you the richest man ever. That was the Old Testament version of seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all other things will be added unto you. So the person who wrote this is wise. And one of the things that I love about Ecclesiastes, which is different from Proverbs, and he wrote the majority of the Proverbs, but the difference between Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, although Proverbs is rich, I read a chapter of Proverbs every day that correlates to the day of the month. So today is the 21st. I read Proverbs 21. You should do it. It'll bless you. But the distinction between Ecclesiastes and Proverbs is that Ecclesiastes talks about life. And it talks about it in a very poetic and powerful way. And I love what he's saying here. Because he's talking about how things function and operate in the earth. And this is important because stuff will happen and it will throw us off. And ultimately what he's saying is there is a time and a season for everything. He is ultimately saying, this is important, he is ultimately saying that life is comprised of times and seasons. Now, why is that important? It's important because if you don't know that life is seasonal, you will get up and you will give up rather in winter because you didn't recognize that summer was coming. Are you hearing me? See, see, some of you right now, you, you might be in winter where things aren't, it's cold, it's chilly and you ain't got no blanket. Things are rough. The sun doesn't seem to be shining. And if you don't recognize that that is temporary, it is just a season, then you will break down before the breakthrough comes. Are you hearing me? So the great wise Solomon is breaking down life and he is saying that life has everything in it. There's a time for this and a time for that. And all those, they actually are conflicting in different seasons, different things happen. In other words, if you're mourning now, just keep living because you'll be dancing soon. Come on, somebody. If you're having to refrain from embracing, if you're being, you're having, you're moving into a season temporarily of things being cut off or, or some degree of isolation, don't you worry because you're going to be able to embrace in a moment. He's breaking down life. Oof, oh God, God's going to do something today. Can't you feel it? He's breaking down life because life is full of ebbs and flows. And there is, this is God. There is a purpose for everything. God doesn't waste anything. And he will never waste a good trial. <laughs> I feel that thing right there. And I might run this alongside and I talk, this about, I talk about this in my book, Balance. I think, shameless plug. Never waste a good failure. Because if you, if you see failure right, first of all, it is possible for you to lose and not be a loser. It is possible for you to fail and not be a failure. So there's always something to extract from things that did not go the way you wanted to go, right? Either I'm winning or I'm learning, which means I'm always winning. Come on, somebody. Track with me. Track with me. It's one or the other. That's important. But I do want to zero in on something that he says in these ebbs and flows of life, times and seasons. He says in verse 7, the second part, he says, there is a time to keep silence and a time to speak. Hmm. 
where do I want to go? There's a time, watch this, this is important. There's a time for things to be covert, and there's a time for things to be overt. And then the question becomes, how do I know what to do when? How do I know what season I'm in? And it's important if there's, if there's a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. If there's a time to plant and there's a time to pluck up, that means that if I am in a planting season and I am plucking up, I'm out of season. Come on. If, if, if I'm in a, an embracing season, but I'm pushing everybody away, I'm out of season. So it is possible for me to be doing the wrong thing in the wrong season, which means that I have to find a way to know what to do when. So how do I know it? There is a tribe in the scripture, one of the 12 tribes of Israel, and it's the tribe Issachar. And what do we know about the tribe of Issachar? We know that they had understanding of, come on, you spiritual people, I love it. They had understanding of times and seasons. So you might say, well, yo, man, that was the son, that those were the sons of Issachar. Those were the children of Issachar. They, maybe they were just special. No, you got to understand that every God quality, each of those tribes had a divine quality. And because we now are partakers of the divine nature, and now we have the Holy Spirit, every good quality in those tribes now belong to us. Which means that that Issachar anointing, the ability to perceive tr uh, times and season is ours as prophetic people of God, people who have the Holy Spirit. I feel that right there. I'm writing my next book right now, and it's called Knowing. And it's all, yeah, it's going to be good. You're going to love this one. <laughs> and it's going, and it's about the reality of the fact that we can tap into the divine resource of certainty. Based on Corinthians, when it talks about how we have the Holy Spirit, it says, eyes have not seen or the ear heard, neither has it into the heart of man those things that God has prepared, but God has revealed those things to us by his spirit. And if you keep reading, that's 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10, but there you go. He talks about how by the spirit, we can freely know things. So if you cultivate a genuine relationship with the Holy Spirit, you'll be tapped into times and seasons. You'll know what to do when. You may not have all the details, but what you will have will be sensitivities. And so if you are in an embrace season and you're letting go, the Holy Spirit will say, uh-uh-uh, don't do that. No, it's real. Come on, somebody. This is real. I don't just do random. I'm prayerful. I'm submitted, I'm surrendered so that I will know what to do when. But it necessitates discipline. You can't be running so hard that you don't stop to be still. The model prayer I talked about in Dallas last Sunday, the model prayer is a prayer that you can pray in 29 seconds. Which means that it is a short prayer, a prayer of few words. Why is it a prayer of few words? Because you're supposed to be listening more than you are speaking. And as you listen, you posture yourself. Is this too, too much? As you listen, you posture yourself in order to hear. Are we tracking? Yeah. So, he says, there's a time to keep silent and there's a time to speak. And God started speaking to me about the reality of seasons where there's a time for being covert and there's a time for being overt. Mm, mm, mm. Sometimes we want to be overt in a season where God has us covert. Let me take my time. Let me take my time. It's about to get good. I'm going to drive down your street right now. I'm going to drive down your street. Here's what it looks like. God, put me on. I'm ready. I'm gifted. I'm talented. I'm ready. And yet, God doesn't put you on. You're still, watch this, you're still covert. And you're mad at God. The one who, uh, who holds times and seasons with divine intelligence, he knows everything about everything there is to know. And we're like, God, there's some people in this room right now, and you think, watch this, you think that people are sleeping on you. 
oh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> They ain't sleeping on me. And then you size yourself up to people that are overt in your craft, in your space. And you're like, I'm better than them. Look better, write better, produce better. And yet they're overt and you're covert. And sometimes you're frustrated because you believe that God has forgotten about you. And consequently, you go to plan B, C, D, E, and F because you're frustrated because you think that now is the time for you to be overt when the reality of it is God knows that if he made you overt, you would be over. Come on, come on, go with me. Don't, don't do it. Come on, go with me. If you are still covert, that means you are covert to and God will covert you in the covert while you are being developed because you have no idea what you're asking for when you're asking for the stage, when you're asking for plat. Come on, come on, come on, come on. When you're asking to be over and God knows what you can handle and what you can't. So there are times, are we still together? Are we tracking? Are we still friends? So there are times, watch this, when God hides you. And you may falsely perceive it as him denying you. Come on. We got some ground to cover. And God is saying, no, 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 no. I'm covering you. Because I understand times and seasons. Watch this. Here, here's what I love about the Holy Spirit. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will give you a check about a person that looks wonderfully good on paper. You ever had that happen? I mean, you, you're going to do business and, and you got a, a, you know, a partnership and the track record is great, the partner that you're considering doing business with, the track record is great, but you got a check in your spirit. And you're like, why do I have a check in my spirit? The references check out. The history checks out. But my spirit don't check out. And it could be because your spirit, watch this, not only knows who the person is, but who the person will be. Yeah. Come on, don't play with me. Come on. We're going somewhere. Stay with me. You're going to get it today. And God knows, watch this, who you might be when you get what overt would get you. And so God might be covering you from you. Oh, we still friends. Come on, we still friends. Y'all still love me. Y'all love me about 10 minutes ago. Yeah. You, you don't know the you that if God warp speeded you from this covert place that he has you in, boom, into over, which you're praying for every day. Is it my time? Is my time? My time. If he warp speeds you into it, so watch this. So this version of you shows up there. That could be catastrophic. Because sometimes there is a maturation that is not about your skill set or your intellect. It is about your character. Not character good or bad. It is about the integrity. The integrity has to do with the integer, has to do with the inside, the structure. So God wants to deal. See, we're looking at the outside. God's looking at the inside. <laughs> All right. Quiet. How do you say quiet in Spanish? ¿Cómo se dice quiet en español? Silencio. Sí, silencio. Mucho silencio. En aquí. Sí. Sí. ¿Por qué? Yo no. No, no, no comprende. So, so, so. I digress. So, so there are seasons, family. That's for free. There are seasons where God will hide you. And then there are other seasons where you have to hide you. Covert seasons. What are you talking about, PT? I'm talking about there are some seasons where the Holy Spirit will tell you to be quiet about who you are. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are some seasons where God will say, shh. Don't, don't be overt. I need you 
to be covert while I get you into position. Oh, don't make me, don't make me. Oh, I'm going to get in this thing. I'm going to get into it. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I need you, watch this. I need you to actually be in the kingdom closet. Not, watch this, not failing to be who you are. But I'm sending you into some environments where I need you to be crafty like a serpent. The Bible says, wise as a serpent, yet harmless as a dove. In other words, you don't go in there in those covert seasons with your Christian badge on your chest. How are you doing? Oh, blessed in Jesus today. Yeah, but what does that have to do with the report I asked you to put on my desk? Blessed and highly favored in the Lord Jesus Christ, my Savior. We praise him and we give him glory today. And all they said to you was, good morning. And now you're the weird Christian at the office that nobody wants to talk to because you're not, you, you know. <laughs> Stay with me. I'm going somewhere the religious people are like, I do that every time I show. <laughs> That's okay. There's grace. But there is a season. There is a season where God will literally call you to be quiet, to move into position, to learn, to grow, to observe. Even Jesus, right? Even Jesus, if you study him, he would say things like, tell no one. For my time, times and seasons, for my time has not come. Even Jesus was hidden for a season. There are covert seasons and there are overt seasons. The covert season is when the Holy Spirit leads you to learn, to grow, and to get into place. It's interesting. It says, the scripture tells us, Jesus says, I need you to be wise as a servant, yet harmless as a dove. Yeah. And you think of like a serpent, a serpent, yet harmless as a dove. You think about a serpent. A serpent don't tell you <laughs> that he's about to bite your butt. He just rose up on you. Next thing you know, you recognize that he bit you because his fangs are in your butt. Okay, too far. That's all right. Second service, a lot of energy is going out today. Bear with me. A little grace. Thank you. A serpent, watch this, is crafty. A serpent doesn't announce itself. It just moves. And you look up and it's up on you. And it's too late. See, there is a reality of a covert season, but a covert season is never meant to be temporary. It's never meant to be temporary. It is meant to get you to learn, get you to grow, get you to observe, and most importantly, to get you into position. We are not called to be covert for those of us who are forever we're called to be covert until the right time yeah. it's kind of like Jericho remember the story of Jericho and he told them and you got to study this it's in Judges chapter 6 through Revelation <laughs> 20 but, but he tells them as they're getting ready to take the city he tells them to circle it get in there get in position and say nothing for six days and six laps. Don't say nothing. Can you imagine that? All those people marching around saying, can't say nothing. Got a promise. It's in front of them. They say nothing until the seventh day. Boom, then they said something, right? So there will be seasons, stay with me. There will be seasons where God will cause you to be covert, but it's temporary. And I have a prophetic word for you. No more hiding. God spoke something to me and I'm going to unpack it. Hear me. Hear me. Not as of a man of my own words in this moment, in this instant right now. I'm telling you. Now is a time to switch. If you were called to be covert because you were trying to get to where you needed to go and to get into position. See, there's some people right now and you're in position and you haven't come fully out of the kingdom closet and I'll be honest with you you weren't supposed to but I'm telling you right now it is just like the seventh day around Jericho 
where God is commanding you to go from covert to overt and to get loud and bold and unapologetic. Now is the time. And let me tell you something. Things are going to begin to break. I got to take my time and teach this thing. I got to take my time and teach it. I'm telling you, it's getting ready to work. It's going to work. See, there was a fear. If I am who I truly am, and if I show who I truly am, I'm going to lose the job. I'm going to lose the favor. I'm going to lose the position. But I'm here to tell you that something has shifted in the spirit. And God is saying it's time for you to move from covert to overt. And it is going to work. Why? Why? Why is it going to work now? Because remember, it's about times and seasons there is a time to zip it and there's a time to speak up mm, feel the lord now this speaking up that i'm talking about is not just you being loud and boisterous and religious and irrelevant and i might add ignorant and irresponsible that is not what I'm talking about. That's the lazy approach to, to the command to be overt. I'm talking about getting into your prayer closet, getting into the secret place with Jesus and the Holy Spirit, having spent so much time with Jesus that when you show up, you're going to look like Moses when he came down off the mountain having been in the presence of God for 40 days and his face just shone beams of light came off his face and he's trying to talk to them and they're looking at him like, what just happened to you? And watch this, he could not be hidden. He couldn't be hidden. Because of his relationship, because of his intimacy, because of his access to the Lord. I'm not talking about you being religious, running up on everybody, telling them about Jesus. I'm saying you being so transfigured by the presence of Jesus that people are staring at you and they want to know what is that? Who is that? What do you have? And give me some of that. Feel the Holy Spirit in here. I wish I had about 15 people that would catch what I'm saying and just begin to praise God with me because I feel war getting ready to break out in here. I feel it. I feel it. You in the right place, baby. You are in the right room. Come on, somebody. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. I feel the enemy getting nervous. Oh, God. I feel the enemy getting nervous. I feel like they were inside the walls of Jericho and they were shut up because they were getting ready to be shut down. And I feel the Holy Spirit, if you would embrace this word and say, you know what? I'm coming out of the kingdom. What was it? Uh-huh. Something's gonna break. Something's gonna break. I gotta teach this thing. I gotta teach this thing over it. Over it, God's calling you out. I see it. He's calling you out. And it's going to work. And it's going to work. The people that used to laugh at Christians, oh my God, are going to be looking for somebody with some power, looking for somebody with some glory, looking for somebody with some wisdom, looking for somebody with some integrity, looking for somebody with some faith. If that's you, give God a roar. Thank you, Jesus. Something is happening. Something is happening. I feel it. I feel it. The enemy's getting ready to let you go. Rob is shot. The enemy's getting ready to let you go. He's got to let you go. He's got to let you go. He's getting ready to let you go. Uh huh. We're going to do business here today. We're going to do business here today. So there's two things. I think I was three. But there are two things. There are two things. Second service. There are two things that you're going to need to be delivered from in order to do this. Two things. The fear of man and the fear of rejection. You ready? 
You ready? The fear of man and the fear of rejection. Let's deal with it. First of all, here's what the Bible says about the fear of man. It says in Proverbs 25 and 29, it says the fear of man brings a snare, but he who trusts in the Lord is safe. That's a very interesting Hebrew word that was translated snare. It's the Hebrew word mokesh, and it literally means a noose. So when it says, it better reads this way. The fear of man brings a noose. And watch this, and not any old type of noose, but this noose in particular is a noose designed for animals. Slavery. Fear of man. That's why you're scared to say something. That's why you're scared to be you. You got spiritual asthma. Can't even breathe. And release the breath that God has given to you. The breath of life. That'll make demons tremble. That'll make the dead be raised. God's gonna break it. I gotta teach this thing. Because I wanna preach this thing, but I gotta teach this thing. And I cannot wait to pray for you before I get on this plane. Mm. The fear of man brings a snare. But he who trusts in the Lord is safe. To overcome the fear of man, you've got to understand two things. You've got to understand first and foremost, the futility of man. Man is futile. I know he or she, I know they look big and bad and powerful. Like they can just destroy. And you've heard somebody say, I'll ruin your career. No, no, no. You've heard him say worse. I'll ruin you. The devil Rashiba is a liar. If you, they didn't make you, they can't break you. If they didn't form you, they didn't ruin you. If they didn't raise you up, they are a liar. You do that and I'll ruin you. I wish a devil would. It's a lie. All throughout scriptures, the enemy of God's people always made threats before they got their butts whooped. They always made threats. When Nehemiah was building the wall, study it, Nehemiah chapter 4. Sanballat and Tobias came up to them, watch this, while they were building. See, the enemy never says anything to you while you're doing nothing. But when you begin to set Come on, your foot into the work or put your hand into the plow, the enemy starts talking and he says stuff like, oh, you old feeble, you old feeble people, y'all ain't really doing nothing, ain't nothing gonna happen. Even if a little small animal came up, they will knock this thing down. But you have to get a revelation and you gotta learn how to tell the devil, hell no, shut your mouth, be quiet, don't say anything to me because you are a liar, which means that anything you say, the opposite is true. That means I'm being fruitful. That means that I'm on my way forward. That means that I'm building something. That that means that I'm being effective. That means that I'm on my way. So you have to understand the futility of man. Romans 8.31 puts it this way. What shall we say then to these things? If God is for me, come on, who, what can be against me if God be for me who can be against me I wish I never would you got to believe it so you got to understand the futility the futility of man and you also have to understand the futility of man's system because man that would attempt to you is operating according to a particular system. It's a system of the world. Scripture puts it this way in 1 John 2 verse 15 through 17. 
It says, do not love the world or the things that are in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. That's kind of heavy. I, I want to just unpack that just a little bit. He's basically saying that if you haven't had an encounter with the love of the Father that casts out all fear, then you are by default going to fall in love with the world and begin to worship the world system because you don't think that there's anything better. And then he goes on to say all that is in the world, three things, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and pay close attention to the last one, and the pride of life. Man that wants to, <coughs> walks around with this pride of life. Can't touch me, I'm larger than life. I do what I want, and I want what I do. Hello, somebody. And can't nobody touch me. And I'm on top of the world. Sound like Nebuchadnezzar in the scripture, or sounds like Pharaoh in the scripture. And, and, and see, Pharaoh was raised up for a season. I feel something prophetic about to hit me. There's some people that will raise up to gather things that belong to you. I feel the Holy Ghost. Oh, I feel God. Because the Bible says you're going to reap where you did not sow. God's going to use your enemy to build houses that you didn't build. I feel God. If you hear me talking, give him praise. I feel the Holy Ghost in here like crazy. Listen, let me make it plain. The Bible says that when the children of Israel came out of captivity, came out of Egypt, it says they came out with great substance. Where did they get that substance from? They were slaves. Pharaoh had the substance. I feel God. Pharaoh had the substance. But he didn't realize that he was gathering it for people that were in covenant with God. See, sometimes you need your enemy to be temporarily in position to gather your stuff. I dare you to shout out into the universe and say, give me my stuff. Somebody's gonna catch this word. Somebody's gonna catch this word and you're gonna be a new man. You're going to be a new woman. You're going to be a new person. You're going to be on fire. You're going to start laying hold of things. I feel it. But in order to do it, you got to be on team overt. So, all that is in the world, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, it said, all that is in the world, put that back up there. Lust of the flesh, lust of the fly, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it's of the world. Watch this. It says, and the world is what? Hey, hey, it's passing away. Watch this. And the lust of it. In other words, that drive, that energy, that force, and that flow is getting weaker and weaker because you're getting stronger and stronger and God has given you an anointing to break some things, to break chains, to break the yoke. No wonder there's been warfare over your life. No wonder you thought about giving up. No wonder you thought you was going to lose your mind. Greater is he who is in you than he who was in the world. Come on somebody right now. Just take a few minutes. Let that sink in. Give God worship. Give him glory. Give him praise. It's passing. It's passing. It's passing. It's passing. I'm going to give you a practical thing too. It's passing. And when you're tempted to do something to yourself, that urge, that lust to do it, that lust to do something to yourself, or something that you know is outside of the will of God, I need you to know that it's passing. And if you can stand on a firm foundation and speak to that mountain and speak to that situation, if you can weather that storm, build your life on a firm foundation, it will pass. 
and you'll have a season to reprieve. God's going to break some things off of you today. I feel the Holy Ghost so strong. We're going to pray in just a minute. We're almost there. We're going to pray, and God's going to break some stuff. I cannot wait to pray for you. I will pray with every ounce of energy I got. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it all in this place today. I'm going to get on this plane empty, but I ain't empty yet. I got something to give. Two things you got to overcome. The fear of man, we talked about. The other thing is the fear of rejection. This is important. How do you overcome the fear of rejection? You overcome the fear of rejection with a certain revelation. And here is it. Here's the revelation. Always remember that rejection is God's servant. You're about to catch it. Rejection is God's servant. Rejection is employed by God. Mm -hmm. It's God's employee. If you're in God, rejection will either direct or redirect you into your divine, predestined, and predetermined places and spaces of destiny. I need to shorten that sentence. If you are in God, rejection guides you into the pre-prepared places of your destiny. So, 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 so it's a guide. And you have to see it at God's, as God's servant. Look at what Jesus said when he was sending the disciples out two by two. He says, hey, tell you what I want you to do. He says, I want you to keep moving and I want you to go into a city. He said, and I want you to, if you go to see, I, I said, I want you to find a house that's worthy. He said, and if you go into a house and they don't receive you, they reject you. The first thing he says is, let your peace come back to you. <laughs> because that rejection, if you see it right, actually should produce peace. Why? Because the Bible says that God opens doors that no man can shut. But he also closes doors that no man can open. And when you are chosen and when God's got a call on your life and he's got a plan on your life, he will close doors to get you to the open doors because even rejection is God's servant. Are you hearing the words? that are coming out of my mouth you got to rethink rejection because what God has for you is for you watch it he opens doors that no man can shut he shuts doors that no man can open no need in banging on a door that God is shut trying to get back in let me back in the club let me back in the relationship let me back in the no baby hit the road Jack Rejection is God's servant. I'm going to let you in on something. Come close, listen. There wouldn't be no one church if I hadn't been rejected. Y'all not ready for that? Because I would have been content to stay in normal. I got pushed into my purpose. I got pushed into my future. I got pushed into my destiny. I got pushed into my calling. And rejection was the agent that God used. Make it biblical, PT. I did a few times, but let me make it biblical one more time. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. That's the prophecy of Jesus. I ain't mad at Judas. I thank God for Judas. Come on, somebody. If Judas was here, I'd give him a love offering. Glory to God. Thank you, Judas. I appreciate you, Judas. Glory. If you overcome the fear of man and the fear of rejection and you walk in your boldness and you walk in your authority, everything is going to shift. God, watch this. There are even signs in the world system right now 
even as it relates to social media algorithms right now the media the content that is overperforming is not content that is watered down or middle ground content that doesn't go anywhere the content that moves is the content that is extreme watch this lukewarm content doesn't go anywhere middle ground central content doesn't go anywhere but sold out content on one thing or another, extreme content goes viral and the world is hungry for the extreme god did that god did that it's hungry for the extreme the problem is it's so hungry for the extreme it will take the extreme in any form and fashion even the extreme that causes a snare that's why you got to be you and you've got to be all the way you here's your mantra I got a mantra for you be all of you all the time to manifest all the things that are assigned to your name let's make it personal Say, I will be, I will be. All, of me, all of me, all the time, all the time. To, manifest to manifest all the things, all the things that, are that are assigned to me. I will be, I will be. All, of me, all of me, all the time, all the time. To, manifest to manifest all the things, all the things that, are that are assigned to me. One more time. I will be, I will be. all of me, all, of me. All, the time, all the time, to manifest all the things that are assigned to me. If you're gonna do it, give God praise. Now let's do business. I wanna pray for you. I wanna pray for you. If you're here, you feel like, man, the Holy Spirit was talking to you. And maybe you struggle with the fear of man. I get it. I understand it, right? Or you struggle with the fear of rejection if you think that if I am who God has created me to be, my sonship in the kingdom, my daughtership in the kingdom, I feel like if I let people know how close me and God are, man, they're going to reject me or I'm afraid. If you struggle with that at any point, I want you to come meet me here at this altar. If you're also saying, you know what, PT, man, I just, I feel you. I, I, I get that's resonating. And I've been covert, but I feel convicted by the Holy Spirit to be over. I want you to come. I want to pray for you because you are the one that God's looking for. You're the one that God's looking for. You're the one. And it's going to shock you how many doors open because you said, I'm going to be overt. The season of covert, the season of hiding is over. No more hiding. You don't have to hide. Come out, come out wherever you are. No more hiding. Come out, come out wherever you are. No more hiding. God's looking for you. No more hiding. No more, you don't have to. No more hiding. That covert season is over. It is over. It is over. That's over. That's gone. It was for a time. Just like Jericho was for a time. They had to walk around six times. Yeah, they walked around six times, six times. Did you know that the number six is another number for completion? People think, no, seven is only the, 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 is the only number. For, no, it's a number for completion. There are other numbers that are completion. Three days, he rose on the third day. That's a number of completion. Three is a number of completion. Forty, 40 days in the wilderness. It's a sequel. That's a number of completion 21 is a number of completion and so is six why how do you know because how many days did God did it take for God to create the heavens and earth six days the heavens and the earth were completed in six days six is the number of completion seven is the number of perfection which brings manifestation it's time you've done good you've done good God's not mad at you. You've done good. He's proud of you. You hung in there. You didn't get weary in your well-doing. You did it right. You were wise as a serpent. But it says, but be holy as a dove. Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit says, now come out of hiding and watch it work. 
you thought it was going to work against you, it's actually going to work for you. But don't do it in a religious way. I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. That's great. But what does that mean? No, be it. Saturate yourself in God. Saturate yourself in the presence of God. People can't argue with glory. They can argue with theology all day long. They cannot argue with glory. They wasn't arguing with Moses when he came back down off that mountain and that glory was coming off him like beans. Sheep. When you walk into a room and all of a sudden they say, who was that? When someone just brushes up against you literally and gets healed. Come on, don't play with me. Who, who touched me? What, what was that? You know what I'm talking about, Chi-Chi. Uh-huh. They won't be able to argue that. They won't be able to argue your conviction. Mm-hmm. But you got to be free of the fear, man. Fear of rejection. And that's what I want to pray. If you're here and you got to, and it's time to rededicate, it's time to come home. I feel it so strongly, man. We can't play like tomorrow's promise. I'm not trying to spook you. I'm just keeping it 100. We can't play like we got all day. Ah, I'll get it together tomorrow. Everybody in the scripture that said that we'll get it together tomorrow got left. <laughs> all the parables are the people that said that that is not positive procrastination. That which you know to do, do. When God gives you a word, it is an opportunity, it is an, it is an invitation. This is real important. When God gives you a word, you can't harden your heart. That's what the scripture says. Harden not your heart. It's in Hebrews. You hear a word, don't harden your heart. Fear makes you harden your heart. Pride makes you harden your heart. Because if the word comes and you harden your heart and now you become callous to the sensitivities of God, you're in trouble. Because I can't convict you. And if I can't convict you, I might have to crush you. Not because I, I don't love you, actually because I love you. I'll crush you to deliver you from your insisting on having it your way. Okay, make that biblical. Let's talk to this cat named Jacob. He was wrestling with God. Study this, Genesis chapter 24. 30, I'm sorry, Genesis chapter 32. He's wrestling with God. Wrestling with God. That's a wrestling match you don't want to win. Because if God just says, okay, have it your way, you're in trouble. You don't want to win that. He's wrestling with God and he starts winning. God says, I love you too much. And Jacob is going to be Israel and I've got a covenant coming through you. I can't let you win this one. Boom. He touches his hip, breaks his hip. Oh my God, now the wrestling match changes. And now he's not wrestling to remain the same. He's wrestling for a touch from God. He said, oh my God. He wanted God to get away from him. Now he's holding on to God, saying, I won't let you go until you bless me. Harden not your heart if you're here. And God is calling you to say yes to him. He's giving you an opportunity. I want you to come meet me at this altar. If you're online and that's you, just say, that's me, PT. Put it right there in the chat. That's me, PT. But if that's you and you're here in this room, please come, please come, please come, please come, please come. Don't care. I don't care who's looking. That's the fear of man when you're worried about who's looking. Come on, if that's you, just come, come, come. Come, I'm going to pray. Something's going to happen. Something's going to happen. And you're like, well, PT, why do I have to come? Because it's an act of obedience. Can I just hang out in my chair? No. Why wouldn't, you, why wouldn't you come? You want See, this is part of the surrender. You want to get your whole life used to saying yes to God. Here I am. W -w whatever you want, whatever you need, I'm yours. That's where the power is. That's where the glory is. You surrender your way into power. You surrender your way into favor. You surrender your way into breakthrough. You surrender your way into glory. I promise you promise you I'm telling you that's what's up under the hood I'm not gifting anybody can be gifted what's up under the hood is a boy that will give God anything 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 and God says because Tore you will give me anything I'll give you anything anything 
Here's it in the Bible. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Are you hearing me? He won't hold back. So, if God is one who won't hold back and you're his child, then the highest version of you is that you are one who won't hold back. Man, there's somebody that needs to put something on the altar right now. Need to put something on the altar right now. Something that you know God don't rock with. And it's been like a thorn in your flesh. And I just want you to move quickly. We're done. I'm out of time. But I want you to, if you've got something you need to give, and you ain't got to tell nobody about it. Ain't nobody's business. It's you and the Lord. But there's something that you need to put down. I want you to come meet me at the altar. We're going to give it to him. We're going to give We're going to leave it here. And God's going to give you the strength not to pick it back up. I'm not playing. I don't say nothing. I don't feel an unction on. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. It costs what it costs, baby. I wish I could pretend and tell you all you got to do is click your heels three times and the glory will fall on you. That's jive. It costs what it costs, man. It's worth it, though. It's worth it. It costs what it costs. <laughs> it costs. It is expensive. But what you get, it's a bargain. It's a bargain. It costs you everything. Yeah, it's expensive. I ain't gonna lie. It's expensive. It costs what it costs. But what you get, it's priceless. God, Lord, I did what you told me to do. Thank you for your love for your sons and daughters. It's rich and powerful. God, I trust you with them. I know you who have begun a good work in them are going to complete it. You're going to perfect it until the day of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. You're not an orphan. You're not alone. You're not insignificant. You are my beloved in whom I am well pleased. Thank you, Jesus. And so, God, I thank you, God, that you're going to seal this word in their hearts, in their minds, in their spirits, in their souls, in their lives. And they'll never be the same again. Come here. Thank you, Jesus. Blessings. Touch each one. Put your hand upon them, God. Your hand. Your hand is greater than mine. Touch each one. Touch their hearts. Touch their minds. Touch their souls. Touch their bodies. Touch everything that concerns them. Come here, Saul. Thank you, Jesus. Touch each one. You know their uprisings, and you know their down sittings. Thank you, Jesus. You know every strand of hair on their head. You know their thoughts from afar off. Thank you, Jesus. Bless them. If there are any sick among us, I pray the prayer of faith right now in Jesus' name that you would touch them and heal them supernaturally as a sign, as a sign that you are at work. Hallelujah. That you are at work. That you are at work. Hallelujah. That greater are you who are in them than he that is in the world. Isha. Do it, Jesus. Touch each one, each one, that they would never be the same again. Bless them. Bless them. Thank you, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we renounce the fear of man. Even Tupac got it right. We fear no man but God. I pray right now in the name of Jesus, she would break the fear of man and that the noose would literally be loosened off of the necks of your children that they might get their voice back that they might get their breath back that they might get their fullness back father i pray in jesus name that you would break the fear of rejection as they have a consciousness of your love that they have been grafted in, that they are, as the scriptures say, accepted in the beloved. Hallelujah. Phew. 
in the scripture particularly in the epistles of John everybody has the same name and that name is beloved not only an identity but a command an identity is that we are God's beloved and therefore there is an appropriate command beloved so father I pray in the name of Jesus I command every heart in this room every mind in this room to be loved that they would experience the rich presence of agape love the rich presence of the father's love that cast out all fear I thank you Lord God where mother and father may have fallen short in demonstrating the love of God not a problem because Abba Abba father daddy God who is rich in love and rich in mercy has encountered them right now seal this word seal this work and their hearts and their minds and I pray that as this prayer concludes we would never be the same but that this word would go with them and continue to speak to them and continue to work on them that they would see it come to fruition I want you to repeat after me Heavenly Father I thank you for your love I feel it I thank you for this word I receive it I'm going from covert to overt by your spirit and for your glory I thank you for Jesus thank you for making him who had no sin all of mine all of my weakness all of my limitation all of my shortcomings all of my brokenness every negative thing that has ever happened to me or through me was placed in his body nailed to the cross and put to death and as he was raised up free and victorious because I'm in him I am free and victorious too my past is behind me and my future is bright and I renounce today the fear of man I will fear no one but God Almighty and I will kiss his son I will love his son I will adore his son because greater is he who is in me than he that is in the whole world now Holy Spirit fill me up to the overflow that I might be everything that you've created me to be I will be all of me all the time until I manifest all that you've created me to be in Jesus name amen 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 may the Lord bless and keep you may he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious toward you may he lift up his countenance over you and grant you shalom shalom in Jesus name God bless you I love you I'll see you in a couple weeks God bless you love you